And with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our series. This was an introduction to Unreal Engine 4. This was a high level meant for newer people who haven't used Unreal Engine 4 or maybe people new to game development. If you're an experienced programmer, don't dismiss blueprints as something that's just there as something for new, unexperienced people to use. Blueprints are an integral part of the experience for Unreal Engine. You may have noticed that it is, that it is integrated into a lot of things, and it makes certain parts like the behavior trees for artificial intelligence and the animation blueprints easier to work with rather than just straight C++ code. Blueprints are intended to not only assist you if you're using C++, but to be a nice introduction to coding if you've never used it before. So don't dismiss blueprints. If you're a brand new person and never used anything, you're going to love blueprints. If you're like an environment artist or an effect artist or something like that, I envy you. Getting things and doing things inside of Unreal Engine 4 in terms of art is fantastic. And then you add on things like blueprints, which allow you to easily just script things and just make things work is is a wonderful tool blueprints are not the solution to everything just like c plus plus is not the solution to everything blueprints do run slower than c plus plus for certain tasks epic is working on increasing the speed of blueprints but there are some things that you should simply do in c plus plus such as heavy map However, the majority of people aren't going to notice it, and you are perfectly fine with creating an entire game and releasing it with just blueprints. Now that I've gone to a little rant with blueprints, because I personally love them, it is like drawing code and playing around when you're actually programming. We've learned the interface. Hopefully you can now navigate around in the interface and get used to where you're going and what you're doing. You've been able to do, take some meshes and plop them in your scene. Actually, for example, something that we didn't do that you could work on and I recommend doing is you have inside of your starter content more props. You can just simply slap some couches in there, go like that, boom. We now have decorations. Oh, that's not enough? Well... What about a table? Boom, there's a table. Oh, that table, you know, it's looking a little bit bland. Uh, hmm. Well, here's a statue. Boom, we put a statue on the table. There we go. We've just spruced up our level instantly, just like that. Super simple. You learned how to do that. Moving, rotating. Oh, our statue's not big enough. Let's just go ahead and rescale that thing a little bit bigger. There we go. We've got BSPs for introducing basic building geometry. We did some lighting. Sure, you know what? This isn't the best lighting in the world, but we've got some blueprints that we can move around. We can work on some stuff. We can go ahead and we can easily reuse things. We've got some nice little dynamic lighting going with some skylighting. We've actually used a little bit of a fake lighting in here. You know what? If you're playing through the game, you might not even notice that there's no lighting in here. You're just concentrating on a giant glowing button and some missed up grass in the corner and this really cool clear staircase. You might not even notice that the light isn't really coming in through here. You made the room aesthetically look good. Lighting is for effect and to make things look well. We've got materials. We've got our nice little ground here, and we've done some things such as this clear staircase. Even our grass, it's all the material, our little water here. You've learned that materials can be simple and extremely complex. We've got, again, blueprints. We did some a little more complicated. We have a button, a button that does something. A button interacts with this. We have a blueprint here to create an end game sequence. We created an end game sequence. We created a really cool little sequence where you were like standing here and then you zoomed around and it was super simple to do and i hope you made extra changes to it and maybe you whipped around and did some rotation and some you know special blue angel type effects when you're spinning around we learned to toss some user interface on we can now quit the game and start the game 
with that knowledge, you could actually make it where another map loads up. And it loads up a start menu. It gives you your fancy title and your fancy credit sequence with some spinning text using animations. Again, it's all in there. We've worked over most of this stuff. And then we know how to open a level. So you have your starting map start up. And then when you hit the start game button, it opens up my map. And when the game quits out, it quits or restart. You can go right into here or back to your main menu. Or even you have another button called my awesome map too. You know how to do that. It's all the same stuff. You just change a couple names. The key is making sure you're talking to the right thing when you're working with blueprints. Making sure our button here knows to talk to that one. Our end game screen knows it needs to talk to the correct HUD. Or a player needs to talk to the correct trigger when the trigger is walking out. We built it out. You've created this fantastic thing. Hopefully you took some more time. You made this fantastic looking island in the middle of nowhere without actually, you know, like back in the old days where we walked off the edge of the earth and now we're going to die. Maybe you put some mountains in there and gave it a little bit more finesse. You know how to build it out and you can compress it and as a zip and you can send it to a friend and you can be like, look what I made. I am a professional game programmer, developer, artist, scripter, BSPer, landscaper. I can trim my grass. I can do everything. And honestly, if you've completed this and you've gotten to this point, you have done everything that you want in order to make a nice interactive project. Sure, there's a ton more to do. There's things like artificial intelligence, making enemies. There's interacting with objects. Technically, we don't have any weapons or anything like that. Doesn't mean you can't have an interactive experience just based on what we have here. There's no reason you have to use this just for games. Use it for cinematic effects, cinematic projects. Use it for whatever you want. The Unreal Engine allows you to take anything and basically turn it into an interactive experience really simply and seamlessly. I hope you continue on. And that is going to wrap up the intro to UE4 series. There will be links and documentation included with the video to give you more information, other things you can look into, where to maybe go from here. There are other series. There's another series like the MVP first person shooter series. You can actually take all this knowledge, apply it to that, and you can create a basic first person shooter from scratch, including learning to do your own character movement.